So Kim, hi, uh, thank you for saying yes to the masterclass. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I love talking about these things. And it's a subject that's very dear to my heart. My daughter is uh, coming up on 20 and I've watched her go through her teenage years, thankfully relatively unscathed by um, all the messages around food, but aware of them in a way that teenage boys don't seem to need to be, although that might be shifting, but. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, very glad that you're doing what you're doing and offering what you're doing, particularly to the IFS world. So, um, right. And we're all immersed in systems, right? The personality system, blah, blah, blah. Can you say a little bit about what you mean by the eating system? I haven't heard that term before. I don't know that anybody else uses it. So it's sort of how I kind of think about, you know, we obviously have our whole internal system, but it's almost like a little system within the system. It's a little subsystem of all of the parts of us that have something to do with how we relate to food and our bodies um, and all the diet culture messages that we've gotten and all of those things. And they all sort of, um, they all relate to each other in different ways. They're polarized with each other. Uh, so it's when I, when I work with clients, I really think about who's sort of in your eating system. Who can we get to know? that's leading you to food, that's leading to your, you to restrict food, that's um, you know causing you to feel shame about your body, all of those things. So I just kind of think about it as, um, as yeah, its own little subsystem that, um, so, so again, any part that has anything to do with how you relate to food, how you relate to your body, those kinds of things, how you relate to movement or exercise even, because mm -hmm. that often falls in that piece as well. Um, and certainly, as you said, the messages from diet culture, we have so many parts that have learned those as absolute fact and helping client, helping clients parts to unlearn that is a huge part of the process. Mm. Yeah. I'm smiling as you're talking because as you were talking, my system was going, oh, yeah, what would my subsystem look like? Oh, yeah, there's the, you know, the, the, the fat kid that went on a diet with mom. And the yeah. kid that was teased by the, I was asthmatic, so was teased by the games teacher and I was eating bums mince pies on the coach and he laughed mm -hmm. and everybody mm -hmm. laughed, I was shamed. And then parts relating to, you know, the parts that love chocolate, the parts that beat me up for eating chocolate. Right, right. But then when you named exercise, I, I remember when I started going to the gym in my thirties, I was determined that it was, I was going for health. I wasn't going to lose weight. It was really important that my motivation had nothing to do with food. And I'm just smiling <laughs> how that part had to be able to say that. Cause if it was about losing weight, I wouldn't have gone. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I get yeah, into and... that, that subsystem, even as you're talking, it's like, Oh yeah, that's what it would, if I were to draw it, that's what. Right. It would yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're bringing up such a great point that so many of these parts are young parts. And, and even, you know, you think about the fact that our relationship with food starts from day one, right? And so much of how we are fed is not within our own agency for years. And so, you know, we have parts that weren't even able to have their needs met with a with a basic need of, of food and sustenance. Um, so even that can shape, um, our, our, like how we currently, how we currently relate to food. I'm thinking of a client of mine who has a long history of kind of every, kind of every eating disorder that, you know, in the DSM and she, uh, we were working with a binge part one day and it turned out to be an infant, Yeah, yeah. you know, that, that hadn't, that was just starving. It was this primal hunger that was so starving right so these things can go back to infancy it makes it makes so much sense i remember when when my daughter was little her mom saying um oh we're going to feed on demand and i i was ignorant of all this so i said well as opposed to what and she said well there's a lot, lot of recommendations that you feed on a schedule and i said yeah. her schedule she said no that is feed on demand right right <laughs> and i said well if you're going through a growth spurt as you know, right? Baby growth spurt needs more food more often. But Absolutely. Then, Absolutely. Then they're going to experience that the needs won't get met and they're starving. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or yes, if you're, if you're, uh, I'm thinking of another client who she just had this super speedy metabolism. She was, as a little kid, she was hungry like all the time. And so when she would say to her parents, Hey, I'm hungry, they would say, No, you're not. And she would, so first of all, she's being told, I can't even trust my, my, my body's telling me. Right. Um, and secondly, she would end up vomiting because 
she would get so hungry and no one was responding to that. And so as an adult, she was kind of eating constantly out of fear of getting sick if she didn't. And so hunger to her was just incredibly uncomfortable. So, yeah, I mean, again, even things like that, I mean, number one, again, you're, you're teaching your kids to not trust what their body's telling you, um, which is kind of where intuitive eating comes back into play. Um, but it, it really is, again, it's so not within our control. And so we're starting this relationship with food in a way that we don't have agency over. And there's still a lot of remnants of that um, as, as adults. So some of the work is really going, I mean, again, a lot of eating parts, cause you think about it, what kind of coping skills do ki- do little kids have, right? It's not like we can't go for a massage. We can't go for a drive. We can't do those things. We don't have the, the, um, the vocabulary to really talk about feelings necessarily. So, but we can go to food and we know that's enjoyable and we know that that feels good. Right. And so a lot of our eating parts are really young parts that have learned how to use food as like a, as a soother, as a distractor, as a numbing agent. And we carry that into adulthood. Makes total sense, Kim. I'm sure it's going to make a lot of sense to people watching too, because they'll be familiar with IFS, probably striking a lot of chords right now. Uh, you mentioned intuitive eating. Could you say a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, intuitive eating is a model that was created back in the 90s. It's been around for a while. Um, and it was created by two dietitians who were trained in a way that dietitians typically are. You know, they're focused on weight loss, they're focused on calorie counting, weighing, measuring food, all those things. And they started realizing that when they were working with their clients, they were getting better, you know, like their A1C was going down or their weight was going down or whatever it was that they were coming in for. And then they would discharge them. And a few months later, they would call feeling really ashamed because, oh, I went back to these old patterns. I regained my weight. Uh, my diabetes is you know up, all those kinds of things. And I started realizing that this doesn't work. Like the focus on weight, do- the focus on weight loss doesn't work. The focus on, again, me giving you this eating plan that may not even be foods that I like. It may not be on the schedule that I like. Um, and so like none of that was working. So they created this model that consists of 10 different principles. Um, but it really is a way of tuning back into your body and understanding what your body wants and eating in a way I kind of use the phrase that serves your body well, um, and your parts. Cause I do think like we kind of vilify emotional eating. I think emotional eating is perfectly fine. I think we need to be aware of why our parts are doing that. But sometimes food is just the thing that works. Um, But intuitive eating really is all about, again, like taking away, um, taking away the diet messages about you need to eat this food at this time, whatever, Um, really challenging the messages that we get in diet culture, how we talk about food, we moralize food, right? It's either good or bad. And when we do that, I'm either good or bad. You know, like I think about Mike Elkin when he talks about his moral meaning, you know, we make moral meaning out of how we're eating. And so I have clients that come in and they say, I was so bad last weekend, right? And they truly believe they were a horrible person because they had a piece of cake at a birthday party. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's like, there's nothing wrong with that, right? right? So really looking at how we view food, the messaging about food, it, it's a very anti-diet approach. Um, so it really is trying to leave all of that behind and just eating in a way, getting to know what your, what foods your body likes, what foods it doesn't like. Um, and they kind of use the phrase for the most part, like eating those foods that your body likes for the most part, no rigid rules. No, I have to cut this out for the rest of my life, you know, any of that stuff. So it really is, again, it's how we're all naturally born to eat. You know, we came into the world eating pretty intuitively if we were allowed to, Um, and so it really is kind of returning back to that. So it is, you know, to me, if you're really doing the IFS work with your parts, intuitive eating is kind of, you know, like literally the sprinkles on the ice cream sundae. Um, but you know, if you just pick up the intuitive eating book and you don't know IFS, in my opinion, your managers are going to run with that and they're going to do it the same way they're going to try to diet. Yeah. 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 It's not the point, right? Right. So you have to do the parts work with it. Okay. So then tell me that leads me to... What is the point? And what I mean by that is you've got three hours, got a bunch of folks hopefully interested in what you're talking about with right. clients probably that are also very bringing in a lot of what you're talking about. What are those folks going to get from three hours with you? So they're going to get how to start, uh, how to start 
working with your clients on understanding their eating system. What are kind of the typical parts you're probably going to run into? You know, like lots of us have parts that use food for, again, sort of soothing, distraction, binge eating is typically kind of parts that need to numb the whole system. Um, parts that are, are dieting or restricting, you know, you've got parts that are super critical about your body, um, you know, kind of who, you know, again, not that everybody's eating system is the same, but who are kind of the typical parts, how they relate to each other. There's a lot of polarizations within the system, like the primary being like the binge eating and the restricting parts, mm -hmm. right? People go back and forth between those two camps all the time. Um, so it's kind of working with those polarizations and getting them to notice that they're both trying to do the same thing in different ways. Um, and then when we, when they get to know each other, that kind of calms down, um, talking about legacy and cultural burdens, because that's a huge piece, right? right. I mean, it's a huge cultural burden. And for some folks, it's an absolute legacy burden that they were handed messages from their caregivers about their bodies, about food, those kinds of things. And, and, you know, working with clients on how to hand that back, um, what are the common kind of fears and concerns that parts have about doing any of this work? You yeah. know, very often it's weight loss or it's, you're going to take my food away from me. It's the one thing that I have. And what am I going to do if you take that away? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, you know, I, and again, my message to people is always, I am absolutely not taking your food away. I, that is a legit way of coping sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we're going to explore like what's underneath that, right? Who are those parts protecting? Even when you said it, I felt this clenching in my chest and it, it felt like this is, this, that's actually survival. You can't take my food. It wasn't even about, right. food. it was like, don't take the food. So that makes total sense. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 So again, kind of who are the, kind of the typical fears and concerns you're probably going to run into the legacy burdens, um, kind of how to get started with clients with this, how to even, you know, introduce the idea, start talking about it. Who's in your eating system? We'll do a little bit of that because it's an IFS workshop. So we have to do a little bit of our own work, you know, so we'll do a little bit of that. Um, there'll be a demo um, that I'll show um, that kind of shows uh, at least a piece of how this works. Um, and um, and like, where does working on body image fit into this? Because that's a huge piece of it. And that's a piece that's, it's it's a that's to me, one of the hardest things to work on. Um, but it's an absolute, it's always at the bottom of what's going on with most of these parts. So, um, that has to be a piece of what we're doing. And so what does that look like? Right. Cause we have the body positivity movement and we have this and we have that and it's like, okay, so where can we sort of land in self with all of that right. and you know, what works for your clients? Um, so, um, and I don't know that we'll have time to talk about intuitive eating much, but I can certainly, um, introduce at least kind of the basics of that. Great. Um, yeah, no, that's a lot for three hours. Um, a lot for three hours. I will be way over prepared. But <laughs> uh, and if I remember correctly, you also have courses that you offer if people want to follow up with you. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, right. absolutely. I've got some other workshops. Like I have an intuitive eating workshop that I'm doing like next month, but it's one that I plan to do kind of on a recurring schedule, um, and an experiential workshop that people can do as well. I would love to do, I do have a group that's for therapists, like primarily my clients now are IFS therapists, which I love. So I have a group for therapists who really just want to work on their own relationship with food and their bodies. It's a four month group. Um, I've been running it, you know, I started when I get enough people to do it. So I've had, I think four over the past year that have started. Right. Um, but I also, my plan is also to start so I don't, and I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like yet, but to start like, um, you know, like a training cohort of people who really right. want to, to dig into that um, and really practice, you know, kind of this skill set and working with clients who, who have these concerns. So, yeah. So Great, but yeah, let's, let's spread the word. Can I just ask you, when you're talking about that group of therapists, is it also open to coaches and IFS practitioners if they know the model? If they know the model? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Great, great. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, I truly believe that therapists like in, in coaches and practitioners as well. I know I use the word therapist all the time, um, but we need our own space with that because we feel like we should know all this. Like, why am I struggling with this? Right. You know what I mean? And right. I feel like, so we have the normal shame that most of us have about our bodies, but right. then we have this, on top of that, of I'm a therapist, I should know better. Right. And I really, truly believe we need our own space with that. So coaches and practitioners are, are welcome with that as well. No, I say that, Kim, because because I'm a therapist, I tend to use that as the global term. 
but yeah. because because I, I teach folks it's like no actually and and it if I keep doing it it could sound this kind of elitist thing and I just hate that so that's why I wanted to oh, I get that I absolutely get that no I get that yes all right I I'm gonna um sign off the recording and then keep talking to you so lovely to see okay. you. I'll wait for the workshop so I'll Thank just put this up on the YouTube channel and we'll stop this for now